Vince Grant, fear is nothing to be afraid of. I'm Vince. Well, when I'm done with this talk, I will make a lot more sense to you. <laughs> I was born, the, the first born into a family uh, that was going to be a really small Irish Catholic family, only seven kids. Um, <laughs> My father was the first in his class at Georgetown Medical School. My mother was first in her class at Yale Nursing School. So pretty much my entire life was predetermined. I, I was to be an underachiever. <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up, it, my parents weren't exactly your Ozzy and Harriet types. My father worked at private practice. We rarely saw him. My mother always had better things to do than raise the kids, so basically, the, the job of raising the kids was kind of left to me since I was the oldest one. My parents were not the Ozzy and Harriet types or the uh, Leave it to Beaver types. My father's idea about discipline was a little bit more medieval. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big proponent of the leather belt. Mm. And for the first 12 years of my life, I thought a belt was something you wore across your backside. And it, it's true. It started when I was very young. I have vivid memories of when I was three years old, actually. I had wandered away from the home and was gone for about an hour. And I got a licking that uh, actually still, I still have scars on my back that still are there. So you can imagine what emotional scars are there. When I started school originally in New Jersey, it was possible for a kid of five years old to go into first grade. So that's what I did. We moved to Colorado the next year, and my father said, our pediatrician recommended they keep me back a year because I'd be so much younger than all the other kids. But my parents wouldn't hear of it. So I started school here a year younger and a year smaller than all the other kids in the school. Plus, I went to a Catholic school, which was isolated. It was way far away from where we lived, two, two miles away. So of course, having any friends from the school was kind of out of the question. I had to walk all my brothers and sisters two miles to school every day, then get bullied all day long, and then walk two miles home every day. I became very good at the, you've heard of the fight or flee response? I was really good at the fleeing portion of that. I, I really did learn how to do that. I became very con con uh, creative, and I used to build little hidey holes and things, places where I could hide and, and, and I could feel safe. There was one point in time when my uh, parents put me, I went to camp for about six weeks and about halfway through that there was a parents visiting day where I actually, when they came, I actually ran and hid from them. <laughs> I know, it's scary, isn't it? When I went to high school, okay, this was gonna be all different now that I'm in high school because I'm a big kid. I am six foot tall and a very intimidating 145 pounds. <laughs> so, well, okay, I wasn't bigger, but I was taller. But the isolation became almost you know, worse for a while because now I had a two hour trip every morning to school and a two hour trip back on the city bus every day. So it was really difficult to you know, make any kind of friendships that you had because you were spending all your time commuting, going back and forth. But in high school, fortunately, this is where I started to actually find my own voice. When uh, I started to you know, use the humor, which I developed over many, many years as a self-defense mechanism. And some kids in my high school, the year before me, had actually started kind of a grassroots, from the ground up, kind of get around the school and get some pep going. We were kind of a poster club, and yet we were kind of a, a pep club as well. And when I was a senior, we got into that, and it was really fun, it was brilliant, it was a creative outlet, it was a place where I could use my humor, and we actually became very popular with the administration. They thought we were terrific. So I have been, since that point on in my life, I have been interjecting comedy into everything I could do. Now, I don't know what your worst fear is, but most fears aren't really even fears. Most fears are conditioned into us all our lives, through our parents, through the fear-based religions that we all are that try to make you feel like it, you're to blame and it's your fault and if there, there are serious, serious consequences for anything. Most fears are ingrained. But I have found that no matter what the fear is, if you hold your head up straight and 
whistle a happy tune, which is what I do. And I wasn't a musician, so I had to use my instrument, which was humor. And that's what I did. And I recommend injecting humor whenever you can into your lifestyle, into your, uh, whatever you do. Because humor will actually kind of push the fear off. And the more you do it, holding your head up, striking a casual pose, and laughing in its face, fear gets pushed back. Fear gets sequestered away. Fear gets hidden. And the more you do it, the more you use humor in your life, Humor can actually not just be a cure, it can actually be a vaccination against fear. The more you use humor, the more fear will not tread. You know where fear fears to go? That's where it is. So if you have any fears in your life, and trust me, my fears do kind of peek around the edges every once in a while and try to come out. And I do try to laugh in their face. Because they seem real to us even though they're really not. So, if you have fear in your life, and you're worried about it, turn it into a joke. It doesn't matter. It's always going to be there, and you're always going to be there, and the humor is always going to be available. So the next time fear comes, it goes, knock, knock, and you go, who's there? It's me, fear. You can go, fear who? Ha! Thanks. line here. You're doing a dramatic speech and it's supposed to be humorous at the same time. And yet what you're presenting us is not so much child abuse because I think a lot of us got spanked, but scars, you know, that's emotional. It's not okay to laugh at this stuff. And so as you brought that out, people were kind of <coughs> laughing because you're funny, but kind of hesitant because it's not okay to laugh at that stuff. This is really powerful stuff that you're, that you're flirting with here, which is how do you take these emotional scars, these things that everybody deals with when they're kids, and overcome them? You know, how do you vaccinate against the fear? And I think that you've got a wonderful speech here that needs a little bit of development, as we talked about a little bit before you actually delivered it. The evolution into a more easy humor Everybody was leaning forward, everybody was smiling, everybody was totally engaged and, and interacting with you. And you could tell, once you got past that painful part, that, that you know, Vince is here and everybody is laughing and that's good. And, and we don't want to spend too much time at that, at that early part because it's hard for us to be there. And yet the, the journey and the way you take us there is what is really so powerful about the speech. A couple of things in terms of your delivery. You're very poised and you're very good at this, and yet, maybe I'm just too far back, I couldn't see your eyes. And I don't know whether that's because you weren't looking in my direction. I don't know, you know, I didn't feel like I was really connecting with you visually, so that might be something to just think about. Maybe spend more time on individual people and, and look at them, because this really resonates, I think, with a lot of people, as to how you, this is really about belief systems. We have a belief system that we are afraid of something, and yet when we crash through that barrier and we hold our head up high, and in your case you don't whistle a happy tune, you use humor, your comedy. What is everybody else's tool to break through that barrier? And I think that's the power of this speech. And it was beautifully done. I think the, the uh, closing was a bit abrupt. You didn't do it service with the, with the closing that you had, but you got a lot of potential here. Nice talk.